Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is uh, another parallel circuit. And in this parallel circuit, um, it's not as maybe as straightforward as some of the other uh, parallel circuits that we've worked on. Um, we can see, first of all, it doesn't look exactly like a parallel circuit. But if we it, and we also notice here that we don't have a voltage. We don't know what the voltage is across the battery. We have current running through resistor 1. We know the resistance in resistance 2. For, for resistor 3, we have both the resistance and the current, and resistor 4, we just have the resistance. Now sometimes when you're working with a circuit like this, it's just easier if we redraw it so we sort of get an idea of what we're looking at. So let's start with our battery right here. Now if we call this point A and this point B, we can see that this point here then is essentially A as well because they're connected. This is just a wire. This point here has got to be A as well, because they're connected. And same up here, that point as well, and this point here. So they're essentially all connected, okay? And that noise you just heard is a big truck running down the back lane here. All right, and so if we go to this side B here, and we go right down this wire, essentially. We're at this point here, which is also B. All right? And we can see that the right side of every one of these resistors is connected to B. So if we wanted to, and if it helps, we could just redraw the circuit. So we have our battery here. We go up to resistor 1. So there's resistor 1. And then we can go, basically we can just stretch this line out for resistor 2. So we can go up here like this. There's our resistor 2. And again, we can just sort of pull this line out a little bit and we end up with resistor 3. And again, the right side here and the left side, that's across resistor 4. So we're going to say, all right, so we'll go up here, put resistor 4 up here. So now we have it drawn in a way that sometimes just makes more sense, all right? So then let's just go to the next page where we do have it redrawn. With all the information, notice, with all the information that we had. Resistor 1 has 40 milliamps in it. Resistor 2 is 4.5 kiloohms. Resistor 3, 2.6 kiloohms and 55 milliamps. And resistor 4 is 1250 ohms. Okay. So now looking at this, we're, we, we need to start stall solving for stuff, right? So we're always dealing with this, E equals IR. So notice that if you have two pieces here, you can solve for the third, the third thing that you're looking for. So we look through here for a place where we have two pieces of information. And we can see that for resistor 3, we have both current and resistance. So that means we can solve for the voltage across 3. So the voltage across 3 is current times resistance, and that's resistance across 3, and the current as well. So then that is 55 milliamps times 
2.6 kilo ohms. So we do the math. 50, oh, turn the calculator on, that helps. 55 exponent, whoops, gee. <laughs> 55 exponent minus 3 times 2.6 exponent 3 equals 143 volts. So 143 volts. So that's E3, all right? So the voltage across 3, we know. Now, if we know the voltage across here is 143 volts, then the voltage across every one of these parallel resistances is 143 volts. So then that means E1 equals E2 equals E4, which equals 143 volts. So that means we have all of our voltages. Now, having our voltages here, we can solve for the current. Oh, actually, let's back up a little bit. Let's start with resistor 1. That's a little simpler. So we'll start here. We can see that we have current. We now know that we have the voltage across resistor 1, which is 143 volts. So we could solve for the resistance. So resistor 1 is E through 1 over the current through resistor 1. So that's 143 volts divided by 40 milliamps. So 143 divided by 40 exponent minus 3 equals 3 point, how many sig figs? Let's go with 3.6 kilo ohms. So 3.6 kilo ohms. And that is resistor 1. Okay. So R1 equals 3.6 kilo ohms. Okay. Now we can solve for the current through resistor 2. So I2 equals E2 over R2, which is 143 volts over 4.5 kilo ohms. So 143 divided by 4.5 exponent 3 equals 31.8 milliamps. So 31.8 milliamps. So then I2 31.8 milliamps. So let's be clear about what we solved for here. We know the total voltage here, we, so we have that piece. We don't know our total yet. We don't know I total. Okay, we've got this. I1 we know. I2 we just solved for. I3 we know. We do not know I4. Okay. So I total, we're still looking for. So we're still looking for I total. Still looking for I4. And total power. All right. All right, so I4. Four, current 4. So I4 
equals E4 over R4, which is 143 volts divided by resistance 4, which is 1250 ohms. So I4 equals 114.4 milliamps. So 114.4 milliamps. That's I4. Okay. So then we've solved for I4. We have everything here. Voltage 3. We obviously know because all the voltages are the same. Ah, yeah, right here. All right, so we have our voltage 3. And uh, what's the last piece we're solving for here? I total. Now, when we solve for I total in um, a parallel circuit, we know that what happens is the current, the total current, is the current that goes through the battery, okay? So that's the current that goes through the battery. It gets up to, let's just change colors pens here for a second. It gets up to this junction here, and then some of the current goes this way. This current splits off in this direction. Then some of it goes that way. At this junction here, some goes to the left and some goes straight forward and then it splits again so it just continues to split through the circuit. So if we add up the currents through each of this resistor we have our total current. So then I total is we have 40 milliamps through here through two I2 was 31.8 milliamps. I3 is 55 milliamps. And I4, there we go, 114.4 milliamps. All right, so I total equals. Now we just add up the numbers because they're all in milliamps. So we have 40 plus 31.8 plus 55 plus 114.4. 241.2, so 241.2 milliamps. Now, that's covering just about everything, R total. Now, for R total, what we could do is just do the um, parallel piece, which is 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, plus 1 over R4. We could do that. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's a perfectly good thing to do. However, we do know our total voltage. We do know our total current. With that information, we could say our total equals E total over I total. Now, the other thing is if you're feeling a little unsure, not confident about, about your answers, you might want to walk through this and then do this as a check just to see if you're okay. But if you're feeling confident with your numbers, you can just go, our total is voltage divided by current, our voltage is 143 volts, and total current, 
is 241.2 milliamps. So then we have 143 divided by 0.2412 equals. So 590, let's go with 593 ohms. Okay, so that would be our total. Power total, let's just solve it down here. Power total equals E total times I total, which is 143 volts times our 241, let's go with 241 milliamps, running out of room here. <clears throat> so we have 143 times 241 exponent minus 3 equals 34.5, so power total equals 34.5 0.5 watts. There we go. Okay, so that's basically solving that circuit. Seems like a, it looks like a bit of a mess, but it's actually, as long as we have all the information, that's all that matters. All right, so then that's been brought to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a good day.